What would a John Wick Nerf Blaster look like if it existed? Five years ago, I tried out the Colt M1911, a cheap but cool and realistic toy blaster. It gave me those action movie vibes, except it doesn't use magazines, has poor performance, and doesn't fire Nerf darts. At that point in history, I thought to myself, it is technologically impossible for a Nerf blaster with all those things to exist. However, recently a company reached out to me with the blaster that challenged my archaic notion. It's advertised as the next best thing to being John Wick, besides being John Wick. That is a bold claim. I said, okay, if it ticks off all six of these checkboxes, maybe then I'll consider it a John Wick Nerf blaster. This is the Zinc 2.0, a 3D printed blaster created by 118 Designs and sent to me by Frontline Foam. Out of the packaging, I was astonished by its small form factor. Good thing I had it printed in my legit bread slash Scooby Doo mystery machine color scheme, otherwise it would look too realistic for a dart blaster. Before even laying a hand on it, the Zinc 2.0 already checked off a box for its real steel design. Just look at this dang thing. I haven't had enough experience with 3D printed blasters to tell you how good the print quality is, but as a whole, the build feels solid. Kudos to the designer for sculpting a grip that's much more ergonomic than the Dart Zone Pro Mark II handle. And that's impressive considering the magic inside. We got ourselves a mag and handle system. Needless to say, that's kind of a massive step up compared to the Colt's front loading system. You gotta love the spring-loaded mag ejection. You can really have fun slapping magazines in and dropping them out. It mirrors real steel weapons really well and therefore checks off this box. The satisfaction that comes from reloading makes it my favorite aspect of the Zinc 2.0. Also, the mags can be inserted or removed whether the blaster is primed or not. To be considered a John Wick Nerf blaster, the Zinc 2.0 has to be compatible with Nerf darts. Well, it's technically not Nerf, but this blaster works with most types of short darts. That's within the same realm. For example, Adventure Force Pro Ember darts can be bought in the same aisle as Nerf blasters. Priming the blaster is when the experience gets less fun for me. The one thing I liked about the Colt was the priming action. For the Zinc 2.0, of course, it requires a lot more effort to pull back, push forward, and pull the trigger to fire. The prime is heavy, but to be expected with a blaster of this caliber. But if you put your hand on here and pull back the top prime while simultaneously pushing your hand forward, that really reduces how heavy that prime feels. Pushing forward, pulling back. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Even so, the Dart Zone Pro Mark II, a similar pistol blaster, is much easier to prime. Does the Zing 2.0 have enough power to get John Wick's seal of approval? When I first started firing the Zinc 2.0, I noticed how punchy it felt to pull the trigger. The blaster shudders almost to give it that realistic recoil sensation. The blaster is shipped with two different springs. The pre-installed spring is approximately 11 kilograms and the other one is around 8 kilograms. According to Frontline Foam, you should expect around 130 FPS or 175 FPS depending on the spring. From my testing with the pre-installed 11kg spring, I was racking in an average of 152 FPS. That is noticeably lower than the advertised 175 FPS. I don't know if it's my specific build or a common trend, but darts have a tendency to fly downward, so I had to compensate for that by aiming slightly higher. It always makes the first few shots kind of an adjustment period. Other than that, I was satisfied with how precise the darts fly, at least from the short range test. They mostly travel in a straight path and rarely swerve to the sides. One neat feature I wanted to point out is the blaster will not prime fully if a mag is empty, which makes it a good visual indication of when to reload. During my firing test, it was hard to contain my smile, and I think it's safe to say that a Nerf Assassin would also be satisfied with the Zinc 2.0's power and performance. Add time, this video is sponsored by Exter Wallet. They sell high quality, stylish wallets to make your life easier. Need your cards instantly? Boom! I received the Parliament and Senate wallets. They're thinner than regular wallets, have RFID protection, and even cooler, work great with Exter's tracker card. The tracker is cracker thin and solar powered. It took two minutes to pair the tracker to my phone, so now I can use the tracker to find my phone or find my phone using the tracker. Oh, that's where it was. I can attach it to my wallet, backpack, banana, so if I lose sight of them, I can instantly find them with that. Check out the link in the description to see how Exter can improve your lifestyle. Now back to the Nerf content. How battle ready and practical is this blaster? The Zinc 2.0 mags are proprietary and only come in 7 or 9 dart capacity options, which does put you at a disadvantage when trying to hoard that precious ammo. And personally, the Prime is heavier than I would have liked. At best, it's a secondary blaster, and that's why I can't fully tick this box off. Also, if you want to factor in price here, you can't get this blaster for thrift shop prices. 
Here are all the different kits available. Feel free to pause the video. The DIY kit is your cheapest option at 120 USD, not including shipping. For that price, you still have to assemble it yourself, which is a pro for your hands-on tinkerer, not so much for the eager nerfer who wants to use it out of the box. At this moment, the only way to cop some 9 dart mags is to buy the Ultimate Zinc 2.0 loadout, but that's the most expensive kit available. If you want to buy separate 7 dart capacity magazines, that's going to cost you $9 each, not including shipping. It's arguable if it's a fair comparison, but the mass-produced Dart Zone Pro Mark II is the cheaper blaster at $80. So that's some food for thought. But man, holding the Zinc 2.0 is like ingesting a nostalgia pill. The experience is so similar to the one I had with the Cult, which was a special blaster to me because it was the first toy blaster sample any company had sent me. And that meant a lot at the time as a new channel with only a couple thousand subscribers. Also during this era, the 3D printed hobby and short darts were mere grassroots compared to what they are today. And because of that, I thought technology's limitations would make creating something like the Zinc 2.0 impossible. But here we are, and this does indeed make you feel like a badass. At the beginning, I said if we tick all these boxes, I would maybe consider the Zinc 2.0 a John Wick nerf blaster. We didn't fully get there, but nonetheless, wielding this pistol instills a sense of John Wick confidence in me. Big thank you to Frontline Foam for the Zinc 2.0. Their website is chock full of great 3D printed blasters, so check it out if you like cool things. Thanks for watching, hope you do something great today, and get that bread.